The year is 1997. A game development group of 15 people called Bungie is working on RTS with a focus on science fiction. The working title for the project? Monkey Nuts. But after Jason Jones, the project lead, could not tell his mother the name, he instead decided to rename it to Blam. The crew were working hard, and while experimenting with the vehicles in the game, the team thought it might be best to transition the game to a third-person shooter instead of a real-time strategy game. Peter Tam T, Bungie's then-executive vice president, used his contacts from his former position at Apple to get Joseph Staten and Jason Jones an audience with the CEO, Steve Jobs. After showing him the game, Jobs was impressed and agreed to show the game at the 1999 Macworld Expo. Before the announcement, the game didn't even have a working title, and Bungie consulted with a branding firm who recommended the name Covenant, but Bungie artist Paul Russell suggested an alternative, Halo. During the expo, Jobs announced that Halo would be released on Mac and Windows simultaneously. During development, Bungie was facing financial difficulties and contacted the head of Microsoft Game Studios about a possible acquisition. An agreement was reached, which led to Halo becoming a Microsoft property, and now Halo was going to be a launch title for the newly revealed Xbox. Bungie had to turn Halo from a loose collection of ideas into a shipping product on a brand new console, with their deadline being less than a year. During development, the team went from a third-person perspective to a first-person perspective, and even had to figure out how to make a shooter play well on consoles. Keep in mind, this was during a time where the golden standard for console shooters was GoldenEye, and to say the controls were janky would be the understatement of the century. So, the team didn't have much of an example, and still, despite all of this, Bungie made one of the best launch titles in gaming history and revolutionized the shooter genre forever. Now, I tell you all this because I want you to understand that even though Halo is not up to modern standards for games and has quite a few shortcomings, the game is still great, and I highly recommend it to newcomers of the series. And just a little side note before I start talking about the game itself, I will only be talking about the single player campaign as I don't have much experience with the multiplayer and I don't feel I could accurately judge it based on how little I have played it. Combat in Halo revolves around nine weapons split into two categories, the human weapons and the covenant weapons. You play as Master Chief, a man kept alive for the sole purpose of killing Covenant. Master Chief is equipped with a shield that recharges over time and he gets starting weapons depending on the level. Let's talk about the weapons, shall we? The human weapons consist of a pistol, an assault rifle, a sniper rifle, a shotgun, and a rocket launcher. While the Covenant have plasma weapons, like the plasma pistol, which can be charged or quick fired, along with the plasma rifle, which has a high rate of fire. These weapons can't be reloaded and must be replaced by picking up other weapons on the ground. And to make them even more of a pain to use, they overheat fast, but you can get rid of enemy shields very quickly, so the weapons seem pretty balanced in my opinion. Then there's the other Covenant weapon, the Needler, which can be reloaded and shoots out 30 seeking needles with the only downside being that they don't do immediate damage, and you have to wait for them to explode on the target to kill them. The combat in Halo doesn't just revolve around weapons though, it also relies on pattern recognition and memorization. Let me explain. First, you have the cannon fire enemies, like the grunts, who don't do much of anything to be honest, and the jackals, who are like grunts, but with shields. These enemies exist mainly to make you waste ammo and give you something to focus on besides the bigger enemies. Elites are enemies who pose a challenge, armed with plasma rifles and a shield. They can be quite a challenge sometimes, especially in larger numbers. The Hunters are the final enemy type, and are massive creatures with a big railgun. They are bullet sponges, but their attacks are easy to dodge, so they don't pose as much of a threat. Each faction also has a different grenade, with the Human variant being a standard explosive device, and the Covenant grenade being able to latch onto enemies. Along with grenades, each faction has different vehicles, with the humans having two, those being a Warthog, which is just a troop transporter with a manned gun on the back, and a flying ship that cannot be controlled. The Covenant, on the other hand, have three vehicles, including a Ghost, a Banshee, and a Tank. Only the Ghost and Banshee can be piloted, however. Now that I've got a combat explanation out of the way, onto the story. The story in Halo revolves around humans fleeing from an alien race called the Covenant after the fall of Reach. The humans wake up Master Chief, and the first level starts as most of the crew escapes on life pods. Master Chief runs to Captain Keys, retrieves his weapon, and fights his way to the last life pod. Keys lands the ship on a ring-like world called Halo, where the second level takes place, which revolves around exploring Halo and escorting the remaining survivors to safety. The third mission starts off as a stealth mission, and then you enter a Covenant ship to rescue Keys, but then everything goes wrong and you have to fight your way through the ship. One thing I want to note about this level is that when you go into the ship, you have to fight three enemies that can one-hit kill you, 
and you are locked in a fairly small area. This makes sense story-wise, but later in the game the developers try to scare you by putting you up against one, but after this encounter it seems pretty tame. Mission 4 revolves around finding the map of Halo on an island, and is, in my opinion, probably the best level in the game. There are many different vistas and an abundance of weapons to use, so I think that this is the best sandbox level in the game, given how many options you have to approach different encounters and the unique variety of weapons at your disposal. As a side note, this is also the level that was demoed and tested the most, so Bungie knew this was one of the better levels. Mission 5 involves an assault on the control room of Halo, and in my opinion is way too long and repetitive. And it also doesn't help that this mission probably has my least favorite encounter in the game. After fighting through a ton of enemies and spending a decent amount of time on the level, the game gives you a checkpoint leading to a bridge area where two aerial vehicles fire at you along with a horde of enemies to fight. This part of the level took me so long that I eventually just cheesed the game and stood in the doorway and hit any time I lost my shield. That being said, I really do like the finale of this mission where you have to trek up a covenant structure and open a door to find a ton of enemies waiting for you. It's very tense, but you also have a lot of cover, so it never seems unfair or unbalanced. Mission 6 involves trekking through a marsh type area and introduces a new enemy type, the Flood, who are creatures that infect other races. These enemies are easy to kill, so the Flood use a rush tactic and attack you all at once. The level ends with you meeting a robot who's not very important, and you help him do something. I don't know, the next level sucks. Mission 7 involves helping the robot and takes place in four hallways that all look the same, where you have to do the exact same task four times with very few alterations. This is the worst level in the game, as it often resorts to cheap enemy placement to kill you, and it just goes on way too long. You escape and help the robot, and he betrays you at the beginning of Mission 8, which is just walking through Mission 5 backwards. In my opinion, this level is pretty forgettable and is kind of boring. Mission 9 makes you go back inside a Covenant ship to find keys. This mission is a great example of how different alien races interact with each other. I know this concept was introduced in the previous level, but I think this mission does a better job with this idea. The way this works is that whenever you walk into an area, sometimes the races will be fighting each other. You can either join in on the chaos, or wait it out until a victor emerges and then kill them. This adds even more strategy to the game, and is a bit of a shame that it's only introduced in the last few levels. Once you find keys, you see he is a flood, and leave with the key to the Pillar of Autumn, the ship from the beginning of the game. Mission 10 is a trek through a destroyed ship as you fight the robot and drive a warthog to get to another ship and escape as the entirety of Halo blows up behind you. This is another one of my favorite levels as it is not too long and it has a very exciting climax that leaves a good final impression. All in all, I believe that the first half of Halo is superior to the second half and personally would rather have the developers had 7 original missions than 10 where half of them were just harder versions of other levels, but looking at this game and the impact it had, I think that despite its flaws, it still deserves a 9 out of 10. Oh, you thought I was done? Well, I want to briefly discuss Halo Anniversary before I leave. This was released on the Xbox 360 in 2011 to commemorate the 10th anniversary of the series, and while the game graphically looks better, I think the art style is just ruined by this approach. The original Halo has this 80s sci-fi aesthetic with a little horror thrown into the later levels, while Halo Anniversary just looks a bit bland in comparison, like all the colors have been taken out and replaced with grit, that just doesn't make it feel like Halo. I mean, look at the enemies. In the original, I can look at my screen for two seconds and I know what I'm up against and I'm already forming a strategy in my head. In Halo Anniversary, when I look at the enemies, I can barely tell what to target on depending on the lighting. During the first mission, the enemies are kept obscured until you get your weapon. But in Anniversary, I can just look at them because the lighting has been changed to a point where it affects the atmosphere of the game. One thing I do like about this remaster though is that a lot of the outdoor areas look really nice and I like the foliage they added, but that's about it. I would recommend avoiding this remaster unless you just can't get past the way the original looks. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and comment to ask me any questions or give me some recommendations. Thanks for watching.